Hi there YouTubers and welcome back to another service video from Sort 6233 The Society for the Restoration of Trains As you can see, tonight's project has to do with a 3 car DMU These are an N gauge and I got these from that wonderful wooden walnut box that I got from St Andrews uh, during the summer uh, this is a three car DMU, I think it's British Rail livery, white with the blue stripe and it's got the double arrow. Uh, running number is E50202, 50202 sorry, um, for the power coach and the other coaches have got their own numbers. Um, and unfortunately this power car doesn't seem to work. So let me just set up my rolling road and we'll see what happens. Okay, let's see what happens when I apply some power. Got the power on, just going to touch the rails and we'll see what happens. And not a lot is going on there. Try and get in closer. A big hand. There's trouble working with end gauges in my hands to become a ginormous. There was just a bit of activity there. Yeah. It's trying to work and then it stops. So let's clear this and have we look and see how we got on. To open up the car I think it's just a simple case of gently grabbing the, the body and the undercarriage and they seem to draw apart. That's what's happened to me, I don't know if there should be any clips but anyway it's opened up quite nicely. So put the body work to one side and here we have, I would look as if it's got two separate motors. Um, I've never seen this before. Just starting to work in N gauge, that's what it looks like. And there's a little wheel which turns. Yep, so let's see what happens if I operate this little gear wheel. And I don't know if you can see the f this is the bogey I'm trying to drive. Um, not much happening. There is a little worm screw in there, which is rotating, but it's actually bouncing back again. It seems fairly simple. The motor rotates an armature, rotating a worm screw, so obviously there must be a gearing linkage, and I think you just make out that there's a series of gears underneath here. Um, so this, there's some problem with the drive between the two. To open these up, if you look at one end, you'll find that there is a screw. And if we undo this screw, I know this because I actually worked on another one very similar. Very small screw, put it very carefully away. This end the bracket shall we call it, yep, comes in there and that allows the bogey to slide out from a notched retainer there just under the worm screw. So here we have the bogey, I'm just going to bring the camera in just a little bit and see if I can keep it in focus as we have a look at it and the worm screw obviously rotates this big screw on the top. So I'm just going to turn it by hand. We'll have a look and see what happens. Now, I don't know if you're aware. I'm trying to turn it one way and it jams. So I turn it the other way and it jams again. So there's something, the problem in here. Now... I did read an article on this 
and my suspicion is that usually it's one of these little 12 tooth gears gets a split and that causes it to jam so if I carefully turn this back up the right way for those of you who want to work in these there's just a little lip here if I very carefully undo the lip then what we get is that this frame removes oh, be careful with the coupler and the spring that's come out and this exposes the gears on a set of axles the, there are five axles the outer axles are for the wheels themselves and they are on a gear so I can gently prise that out then there comes a little a smaller gear which I think is a 12 tooth one oh these contacts have come to drift uh, I'll just take these out of the way folks look at the filth in that one there's two sets of contacts on each side of the bogey so be careful with that uh, so let's remove the rest of these gears It's a small one. This one I believe is a 16 tooth gear. Oops. Try not to force it to exasperate the problem. Two. And the third one. There. And finally the other drive wheel like so uh -huh. right now this is a good bit and these things are so small it's hard to be absolutely sure But what I read was that these gears tend to split. So I'm looking for a split in the plastic somewhere. Not there. I don't see it there. But as I said, they are quite microscopic. And it might even be this gear here. But these bigger ones tend to be okay. Alright. I managed to find a supplier for these. So, gotta call Bob, I found him in. I have here. 12 tooth gears, there are four of them, and here are six 16 tooth gears, and over here are two 16, so 25 tooth gears. So, looking at the bogey, it would appear to me that the 25 tooth gear would be this one here, the 16 tooth gear would be one each on the wheel bogies and one on the centre axle and the 12 tooth bogies uh, gears would be for those two there and it seemed to be that there's enough for both bogies which means not only the one I took out but in fact the one 
at the other end because this is also a driving bogey. There are no dummy bogeys on the DMU driver, so I think it'll be a case of replacing all of these gears. So I'm not going to sit here and watch you or let you watch me do all of them, but I'll maybe do one or two to give you an idea of what is ahead of you. So let me just put this one aside. I'll put most of this stuff here aside. And I shall leave out this centre tooth, the centre wheel, and one of the smaller wheels, and the rest I'll just leave to one side. The plastic gear is very tightly fitted onto a brass axle, so I'm just going to gently hold the brass axle with my tweezers and squeeze down keeping the axle covered in case it decides to spring up and I'll gently press down and that should hopefully slide the gear down the axle so all I can do now is holding the axle firmly he says and then try and manipulate the gear from the other end. There we go. That didn't hurt. This is the 16 tooth gear. Put the replaced one to one side and the new one here and simply reverse the process. Line up the axle with the centre hole. Oops. Turn the wheel upside, the axle upside down and gently squeeze so that the axle lines up, sorry, the gear lines up in the middle of the axle. So that's how I've done it. As far as I'm aware, there's no kind of left and right, they're both they're symmetrical. So don't think it matters if there's a thing called upside down, just do that. So I've got a number of wheels to do, so I'll get on and do that and uh, see what happens at the end of the process. I've reassembled one of the bogies and she seem to be running not too bad. But I'm going to show you a lesson which I always find very difficult to learn. And that is the assumption that every time you work on something it's just gone faulty. Well, what I think has happened is that this has been dropped. Because when I assembled it, and I went to put, or as I was assembling it, and I went to put the coupler back in, I noticed that the coupler hook was missing. It should really look like that, with the knuckle on it, and that bit there is missing. And then uh, when I did put it in, it bounced back out again, because right here is a big hole, which shouldn't be there. That has been broken off. Someone has dropped this poor little machine on its nose, and broken the bogey. Which means I'm now going to have to strip it all down and build up another bogey. So I'll get back to you very shortly. To fit the coupler, put the little pip into the spring and gently ease the coupler into the recess. And I want to try and make sure that the spring is reasonably horizontal so it's pushing out the way and not up the way. Now I have to insert the bogey. At one end of the bogey are two little pips which fit into the frame and at the other end is a lip which will be connected again to a loop in the frame. 
so I have to do this without disturbing the coupler in my sole hopefully yep it's clicked into place and at the back gently press down and that is my bogey now up and running and hopefully quite freely just make sure nothing is jamming you seem to be caught catch somewhere caught caught somewhere so just a quick look That looks pretty free, I've turned it there, everything's working fine. So now I have to install this into the chassis. There are two wings at the top of the bogey, slide into two receptors at the front of the mechanism, and I think if I just kind of rotate this little here then it should allow it to feed itself in and at the same time I have to allow for these contacts here you're doing this because you're doing it blind these contacts have to touch uh, I think is these two bits of the frame oops so it's basically working blind and I think one of them has to contact the earthing strip. Yep. So I'll just try and press this down a little bit. Yep. And the other bit has to contact something else. It will contact. Yep. I know what it will do. It will contact this piece here, which sits over the front. And does, as far as I can see, two particular jobs. One is to hold the bogey in place and the other to provide the second contact. These little, I think they're 8 BAs. And that will now be a little screw. Try and find the right screwdriver. You can see that there, of course. And like so. Right. Okay. Now I'm going to part a uh, my power supply. I'm going to use the contacts at the other end of the bogey. And it's put in there. And there we have the running bogey. Lovely. I, mean, I, get, I don't have an awful lot of power going to fly to that either. It will probably need to run in. So I'll just hold it there a while. And... Excellent. I'm just going to try it reverse. I know it's a bit noisy, I don't know if that's normal or not. But it's working in both directions. Which it didn't do before. And fade. <coughs> I have a second bogey. Uh, which I'm now going to strip down and do exactly the same as I did to my first ball game. When I get them both completely uh, stripped down, new gears, wheels and contacts, I'll get it built up, then we'll come back and see how well it's working. Again, apologies for the throat, folks, but I'll catch you in a few minutes. Bye for now. And away it goes.
what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it to a halt. Switch the polarity and see if it's going up as it rich. There we go. I said I was leaving this bogey as a front, so when I'm assembling it, I have to make the front go to the end. And also, if I go the wrong way around, you might notice, or you will notice if you're working on one of these, that it's designed in such a way that the front end has, um, has a displacement at the front to allow the cab body to sit there so that it won't actually go on the other way so there's my little coach let's take it back onto the track and then I'll try and find the other coaches that go with it and see if I can get my little 3 car DMU up and running well this is running around the track and I'm just going to let it run round and as we pass you might just see the other two cars sitting on the siding the next time round I'm going to bring it to a stop set the point and see if we will reverse in and pick up the rest of our points so we'll come around and just going to control the power there we go switch the polarity Hold on while I switch the points. Taste into the siding and into that one there. So let's turn up the power again. There she goes. Last set of points, second set of points. That's a sticky set of points, folks. We helping hand, I think, this time. Have been successful. In these points, I'll just give it a wee helping hand. And there we go. 